You're listening to the No Invite Podcast. Season four. The process. Bang, 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 bang. We back. No invite podcast. Yes, I'm bringing back the bang because sometimes you need more bang for your buck. And here at the No Invite podcast, if you're going to bang, 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 bang. You dig? And we got Hot Mama. What's happening? Hey, only the best stuff, you know? Only the best bang, bang for your buck right here. And since you ain't paid for it, you're getting what you paid for. Fucking with us. It's the No Invite podcast and we are the most, the world's most politically incorrect podcast we are the most the, the world's most um weirdo podcast we're weirdo friendly you know but not specific to weirdonism only um how are you doing today today i am very tired but i am very happy as well oh yeah happy like gay or happy like happy uh I'm happy happy i don't know i don't feel kind of gay i don't feel really gay right now <laughs> just kind of happy are you like and only when you drink you start feeling gay um no i think it's just because i'm so tired is why i'm not feeling really gay <laughs> i ain't got the i ain't got the, the strength for this today no so being gay takes a lot of motherfucking strength and energy these bitches is wild and let me tell you <laughs> i'm gonna take your word for that you know, i'll take it from a professional I, I can dig it so look we're here we're back I'm glad that you are back because we definitely have to recap and talk about what you got going on. Uh, For those of y'all that don't know, Hot Mama just dropped her brand new podcast. It's called The Love Fix. And she dropped her first episode on International and National Side Chick Day. Um, How are you feeling? I feel like I'm interviewing you fresh off of a fight. How are we feeling, champ? Hey, you, you know, got the hoodie on, you got your Rocky hoodie on, you, you get to go. She flew all the way back from the Milky Way to be here, y'all. You know, except for hey, that, I'm telling you. From the dark corners of the of the, the universe. So uh, how, how was it? it? It's surreal. The feeling is surreal, honestly. Um, being able to hear the feedback, too, and, and hearing uh, my voice like that on Spotify. I mean, I guess I hear it like that from, you know, this podcast. But it was different with it's my different brother. when it's your own. Yeah, yeah. You know? Not it's to like say that this ain't a piece of uh, this little piece of you that lives here too, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I just follow your lead here, though. You know, <laughs> I just definitely. get, in, I no, just get in where I fit in. You know what I mean? Like I do what I can or whatever. <laughs> I'd always do what you can, and you know, it's good, it's good to fit in places that. You want to you want to see your people win? <laughs> no, no doubt. No, that's why. That, I mean, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna tell you my spiel and my take on it. But go ahead. How was it? So it dropped. So yeah, it was an amazing. Feel. Honestly, a um, in the morning, I was a little sad because I woke up at five a.m. sharp and I was ready to listen to that shit, and I couldn't find it. And I was like, <clears throat> my husband told me that there was a possibility, and you had told me <sighs> after, like after recording, you know, anywho, you had given me the heads up to that. And so I was sad. And then um, upon further investigation, I seen it and it made me so happy. And it was at 6 a.m. instead of 5 a.m., which is fine. Just an hour difference. I was so happy. I, it really made my day. And um, to hear all the feedback from some listeners uh, made me happy. Any, made me any, happy. any other podcasts support you or, or that you've been on and pull up? Did they, anybody give you like, so I'm not going to say support you because, you know, uh, you know, there's ego and everything. So I don't expect a lot of people, you know what I mean? Some people be hating on the under, but <laughs> did any other podcasters like that, you know, have listened to your shit and give you any feedback or anything? Um, no, no feedback from anybody else besides yourself, but, um, maybe because I think highly of you or something, your feedback was really kind. And so I was like, I really took that into consideration when you told me you enjoyed it and stuff. And the, uh, I don't know, there was some parts of it that I was unsure about or whatever. And you were like, nah, it's good. And so that made me feel really good. But besides that, nobody else really, um, there was like some friends that I haven't talked to in a really long time that said, um, they were like, oh, I really enjoyed hearing you laugh. Like, I can't wait to hear more episodes. And, and that made me so happy because I love to bring a smile to people's uh, faces and to know that my laugh helped somebody's day, you know, um, or just made it better was really, really um, grat- gratifying or it was really. 
Yeah, fulfilling. gratifying. Yeah, it was really fulfilling. fulfilling. And it made me super excited to release these other episodes that we got already recorded and, you know, those future episodes that we're going to record and release. Oh, release yeah. Episodes. Those so now that you rubbed your first one out, how do, how, how, how do you think? Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> listen to the love fix if you want to do <laughs> shit like that. But um, now, now that you rubbed your first one out and, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, you know. How does it feel? Do you feel really the release? <laughs> that release was, uh, God, that was what I've been needing for sure. Like, uh, having it, having it thought that day or whatever, a release that day. Wow. Like super, it's real. It just makes it like, okay. So the first episode was the hardest because there was a lot of editing that we had to do. And so from now on, we got our template, you know what I mean? With the intro and outro moving forward, it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. So um, it makes it just like so much more real. It's really, it's really gratifying and really fulfilling when, when you take an idea that you thought about and contemplated and planned and then not only execute, but see it come to fruition that's why when I hit you up, I'm like, how you feeling? How you feeling? Because I know how that feels. And I'm sure like when you first made your first tie-dye clo- article that you could say you was really happy about, because I'm sure you know what tie-dye is experimenting. Same thing with podcasting. You do a couple of little dry runs or a couple of things. You're like, nah, this ain't it yet. And then when you finally get to something where you feel like, because it's being exposed, you know, it's like you're exposed. When you're an artist, that's why people say artists are sensitive as shit because you know, you're exposing people to, you know, something that you don't know if it's good. You feel it's good. Maybe you do know it's good, but like, you don't know if everybody else is going to feel like that. You're mainly doing it for yourself and hoping that it lands with the people it needs to land to, because I think everything that we do has intention. Mm-hmm. So like how you said, though, the, 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 like the way I, I looked at your, um, your podcast is it, it was uh, informative. It, it, uh, it was hilarious. And it, um, it's it's something I feel like that you're doing that you could help other people with. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's how I seen it from from my eyes looking at it. So I was like, yeah, this shit's dope. But I ain't gonna lie, I skipped through some shit, and I told you that already. You know, I mean, some things just ain't for my ears because y'all talk about a lot of shit and a lot of different things, and it's no shade to nobody. But I'm just letting you know, some shit ain't for me. You dig? But for the most part, I really just from the outside looking in, I really dug how you guys put it together. How, how you guys is um your chemistry with you and your brother obviously because you guys know each other no shit but you guys <laughs> you guys like you said that's your brother that you really you know could talk about anything with so that helps a lot because he understands you and i'm sure you guys then had plenty of conversations prior to this whole thing but um yeah first one rubbed out second one is you know swimming around in the chamber and uh you know um Anything that you would like to, t- anything else? Like, what what else did you feel after the, after the podcast dropped? I mean, how how, how did um, like for instance, me, I like to look at my shit and like study on myself and how to get better. So I listened to at first, I would listen to my podcast like a few times before it dropped. Just you know, mm-hmm. now I'm just tired of hearing myself. I'm just like whatever, motherfucker. No, you're not. Even, even I can't stand myself. Right. <laughs> you still like? No, no, you're not. You still talk. You talk too you're much still here though. talking that shit. No. <laughs> um, what I one of my things that I really liked from it was um, being able to have the experience that I've gotten from being with you here. I was able to take that to my brother, and um, the first couple episodes. Uh, he led the way and he did the intro in, you know, welcome to the love fix, blah, blah, blah. But I kind of felt like um, this could be better, you know, this could be better. And so it gave me the confidence, you know, having this experience here gave me the confidence to be like, hey, is it cool if I take the lead and bring us into the show? And um, that was that was something that was like, took a lot of um, confidence in me to ask because I don't really like to overstep, you know, I like to just be told what to do or whatever. And so um, taking that initiative made me feel like, Hey, you're a boss bitch. You got this. Like, <laughs> well, remember when, 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 when you first came to the podcast and you started uh, doing episodes with us on the regular, that's, that was always your intention. Your intention was to 
I'm going to drop my podcast. I want to do one, you know? And I told you, like I told, like I tell everybody else that joins the podcast at one time or another, I was like, if this is what you really want to do, this is a great place for you to, you know, uh, you know, earn your bones and, you know, what I mean? life like, experience. Yeah. Huh? And, 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 you know, get on the, uh, get on the wagon and, 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 and then eventually, you know, you, the training wheels come off and you feel comfortable and you go do your own shit, you know? And, and, that's what I, I always try to encourage people because one thing I've said, and it comes with business and everything else, I don't want employees. I don't, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to have them, but like if you're in my inner circle or if you're somebody that I deal with on some kind of business, I want you to be a boss, your own boss, mm -hmm. because only then can we really move um, together on one accord and really handle some shit. When it's all on one person and only one person and it starts and stops with one person, then you're at the mercy of that situation. See, now... Let's say one day I wake up with a fucking wild fucking hair on my ass and shit. I'm like, yo, I'm not doing a no pod no invite podcast no more. You still gonna keep doing what you do. You have your own platform now. You'll be able to carry on. It's gonna suck, but it is what it is, right? I don't have no intentions of doing that. Like I said, I'm not done talking. You know what I mean? But, uh, the, the, the main like, thing I hate is, it when you say that. Yeah. <laughs> when you're like, I'm not going to do this no more. Or even when you're, and I get it. Like you got so much, but I'm like, don't, don't do me like that. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't like to play with y'all emotions, but like I tell you, it comes from frustration mm -hmm. and it's not because shit. It's not because um, it's just, I got a lot of things that I do. Like, the average person that follows me probably has an idea and they think, oh, I got a big team. I don't have a big team. Like when it comes yeah. to this shit, I have teams that are compartmentalized. Like, for instance, you guys are my no invite team. You feel me? And we are all a team together and we all work and whatever. But then it's like, I don't have a team for the clothing line. I, I have a team for the label, but I still run most of the duties and responsibilities for that. Yeah. I, don't have a, I don't have a team for a lot of shit. So it's like everything that I do is really, if I don't do it, it don't get done. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, it's like, if you're around me, I need you to soak it up because I need you to maybe one day help me the fuck out. You feel me on doing this, what I'm doing now, if yeah. you want to do feel, feel the need to. But most importantly, I want you to be able to walk away from this experience and be like, I could do this shit. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I have, you've given me that confidence. It like feels like I could do this shit. And um, I know you can. Thank you. Um, I did let Tim take the lead with, uh, with editing, you know? And so. Uh, that's your uh, team. That's yeah, that's my team for sure. But at the same time, I want to know how to do that shit too. Learn so, it. Yeah. And so when it uh, came time to edit this bonus episode that we recorded, um, I was like, let me see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, sit with him. I mean, that's how you learn. And you know what? That's important because it's important to the consistency of your podcast. What if Tim is sick? Or what if he, oh, you know what? I, I, got, a, we, I got a family thing. Or whatever the case might be. Shit happens. Life happens. And you know what? The show got to roll on. Yeah. Or maybe he just gets busy and he ain't got time. You got to be able to go in there, record yourself, set it all up, and edit. Yeah. And, and you may not have to do it all the time because it's good to have help. Like, the fact that you have him helping you is big because you could get burnt out doing it all by yourself. And then you start losing the love for what you're doing. Yeah, totally. Because it has to be love involved first. You got to love what you're doing and for you to want to dedicate as much time to what you're doing. You know, that happened to me with my tie dye is I was uh, feeling like I had to just produce hell of uh, hella shirts, like fill up my racks. And I got to a point where I was like mixing up colors or doing things. And I was like, not even happy with what I was creating. And I was like, not cut that shit out, Esther. Like you really got to be happy with what you do and like be proud of what you're producing. And if you're not proud of producing it, then slow the fuck down. And mm -hmm. so I did. And I had to be like real intentional with what I like, like what I've, what I'm creating because otherwise it's not going to be worth anybody's time. If it's not worth my time, why is it going to be worth somebody else's time? Yeah. I think right now being that we're uh, not exact, we're not exactly corporations like that or big industry. We are very small businesses. So I think right now that's the important thing is that when people buy shit from you, they buy, they're buying the artistry. Yeah. Pure because you're, you're producing something from your own mind and taking the time because you really like to do this shit. You know, it's like there's a lot of soul in what you do and what we do, right? Like, you know, all this shit. I'm wearing this. I'm wearing all my shit right now. You feel hey, what I'm saying? It. I got your hat right here too. I was wearing it today. And stop playing, you know? And to me that to me that means a lot though because it's I'm sure you feel the same way when you see people uh when you see people, you know, wearing your shit. You're like, "Yeah, you know, this is dope." It feel, you know? So yeah. 
my thing is is like this i tell people um you gotta love what you do first because you gotta dedicate that time and i think if you lead with those fundamentals you'll be able to uh sometimes uh you know um i'm not gonna say risk but you'll be able to compromise sometimes you know because um i do stuff when like for instance my clothing line i don't do a lot of run i don't run a lot of shit you know so whatever i run i'll run a handful and if you want them get them they're gone i'll probably run something else maybe a similar design or the same design on a different article of clothing or whatever but you're never going to get the same shit again mm -hmm. and by me doing that that's to me because it, it feel i feel like you know i have more hands on on on, on smaller runs and I have, they could come out more like how I want them to. So I would rather people have my clothing, but maybe some, if I had a party and I had people pull up wearing my, all my clothes, no, it'd be rare that too many people had the same shit. Mm, you I understand see. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I like to keep it like that. And uh, because oh, to I me, that's part of the artistry. That. That's yeah. part of the artistry. Like That makes it I, unique, you know? These masks I'm wearing are only May 24th. That's but we, but they're pretty much handmade. You feel me? So, I think it makes it kind of like a in demand thing too. When there's not very much of it, you know, like you want to grab it before it's gone. Mm, that's another thing. Yes, it's exclusivity. It's like if I know that there's only so much of this. We, we, I was breaking it down on my friend. I was like, it's like a bakery. If you're gonna run a bakery, there's two ways to run it. You bake a lot of shit every day, and hopefully you sell out. Or you, you're like, I'm only gonna bake this much of certain things and that's it and, and and be niche is what they call it where it's just you know you no one's like what you what you do kind of you know how you operate because of the limit the the how limited it is you know it'll create a demand yeah because people if they especially if they like your shit mm -hmm. then they're gonna oh look i love that but i gotta get there early and buy you know the the brownies or she or the or the muffins that she makes in the morning and shit or else they're gone you feel me so, but and it, and to me, I like to be hands on. To till we get to that point, though, you know what I mean. I, I like to be hands on. I don't like people to. I don't make shit that I wouldn't wear. Put it that way. Hey, I'm hella high because <laughs> I want some muffins now or something. I ain't gonna lie, that sounded really good. <laughs> Look, we're gonna keep it moving. The week was good though. So your week was how, so. How was now that we that we got that out the way? You know, that was just the recap of of you dropping. We done went on all kinds of tangents like we always fucking do. Um, how was your valentine's day my valentine's day was great i had a really good one it was really good i um <laughs> so i'm big on telling motherfuckers what i want right like why am i just gonna um expect people to know what i want like and I so love i that shit you gotta right? be just saying, right? this is what i like so I told my husband, I was like, um, I think I want to be like spoiled this year for Valentine's. Like, um, and so he did, he, he spoiled me. He like delivered me flower or like roses. And like, I got this really cute sweater that I'm wearing that I haven't like taken off. It probably mm. smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you, that's why you don't want this Wi-Fi technology, but we'll get back to that in a minute. <laughs> no. Go ahead. No, but I basically got spoiled and I was like so grateful for it. And um, I told him, I was like, I don't need this every year. I'll let you know when I would need this again. Like I'm good probably for a while. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I had a really good one and stuff. I was really grateful, really happy. I think, I think it's, I think it's important to say what you want. I think over time you learn more and more, you know, but there's certain things like, like, like Valentine's is definitely a mood. It's, it's not, it's not exactly um, the same every time. You yeah. feel me? Some, some years you're just like, ah, it's whatever. And some years you're like, let's go fucking, I'm, you know what, let's do this or whatever. But the most important thing, is, and I think in, in any relationship, is the directness and being like, yo, this is what this is what we feel like. Because as a man speaking for myself, and I'm sure some a lot of men could relate, we can't read your fucking mind when it comes to shit. Like, what the fuck do you want to eat? <laughs> Seriously. Don't ever and, ask and, 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 me that. <laughs> and if you if you can't look, if you can't, this is my thing. If you can't come up with something, then don't fucking shoot down everything I come up with, because we're never gonna fucking get anywhere. And you know what? At this point, eat a fucking peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 
<laughs> no, have you, have you seen the meme where it's like the notebook and he's like, what do you want? And she's like, I don't know. And yeah, she's like, what do you want? <laughs> she's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was like a spoof movie, right? Where they're making fun of that shit. <laughs> yeah, I love those movies, by the way. Yeah, no, but back to the directness, though, for sure. I feel like um, it's hella toxic to think that like somebody can read your mind in what you want, right? Like to think yeah. like, oh, he, he, he's going to know that I want this or that or or she's going to know that I want that, you know, like, nah, say it with your chest. Like, yeah. and see, that's the thing, like. Since it's a when it comes to that type of stuff, it's definitely a vibe, and you gotta know your you gotta know the room. You feel me? Mm, if you that. know that your girl is the I want to be romantical and she likes to be pampered type, then that's what you lead with, you know. But if she's not feeling that at that particular year, or she wants to switch it up and do something different. That's when she needs to step in and be like, "Yo, yeah," because that's me, right? I'm hella low, like low maintenance all the time. Like I don't give a fuck. Like <laughs> take Which me out the day before or something. That way we avoid the crowds. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but see, and that's what that's what made it good though for y'all, you know. And and that's all I'm saying. It's like you know, with the directness, is there's certain things like there's nothing wrong with knowing your partner and knowing what they want. But um, I guess uh, if the other person doesn't know, doesn't feel that they want that or whatever the case, speak up. You like know what? You, no, you go don't. Ahead. Go ahead. Like, go ahead. Okay, I was gonna say that. Uh, what really helps though is that you. <clears throat> Say with your chest to everybody what you want, right? Because not everybody fucking cares about you and what you want. Like, and so that's why I'm like really grateful for like this um, safe space between my husband and I where I can say what I want with my chest and hit and like, and he pick it up and be like, okay, got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because not everybody in life that you say, oh, I want this or I want that is going to be like, okay, I got you. Like, they're going to look at you be like, okay, cool for good for you. Like, <laughs> see, but you got, you see, you got the kind of demeanor and voice. Where like you could you're like a hostage negotiator. Like you could say anything and get your fucking, you know, make it happen. Like just because how you say it, like, okay, everybody, uh, you guys are being really fucking difficult. So hey, I you got guys my could kindly voice and I got my I got well, I've my heard you, I've heard your yelling voice, so I've heard your flash before, so let's not I, <laughs> there's there's all kinds of hot mama. There's not just one style. Don't let her fool you and she's look at her, she's trying to hide I'm that shit. Try. No, you haven't. Have you heard me? <laughs> I've known you for how long? I've heard all your shit. All right, I've heard you. No, okay, but I've heard you once or twice. I'm, I'm, I'm being extra, but I've heard you once or twice now. You know, I, mean, I heard you. As, as mellow as you come I down here and try to be a hippie, but, I mean, we're all like that though. <clears throat> Some of us are those just are, more. Those are those things I don't want people to see. Like, don't be looking at me. Fucking check my kids. Or... Yeah. But you got to though. That's human though. Like, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. These kids could get checked like everybody else. You know? Hey, kids they can get, get it, for... motherfuckers. Yeah. They can get it. <laughs> Everybody's like, man, fuck them kids. Nah, uh uh. Check them kids first. Check their ass. Let them know they out of pocket first. And then, you know, fuck that shit. I mean, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's dope. Valentine's Day was great, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, for sure it Valentine's was. Valentine's Day was, you know, it's always, it's always cool. Like, it's definitely a vibe. It's, 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 um, my, my thing is that, uh, your, your shit feels special every day. You feel me? Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got to put my finger in your butt, girl, or whatever makes you feel good, you know, and just let me know. Put my thumb in there. Whatever. God I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's, I'm just saying, um, the point is, is that, you know, let me know what you want sometimes, you know, or else I'm going to lead with what I know from you. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Valentine's Day was cool. How do you feel about... um? the the chick that got kind of i'm not gonna say she got exposed because we really don't know maybe her dude really right like that maybe he was in an all like you know female environment or something but um i know you guys i know you've seen, you seen it what do you i, I know you've seen it. it's definitely her writing but look you've seen the woman. post about the chick that posted up all the money and a, a, a card saying hey pack your bags we're going to dubai and the internet was just cooking her because uh, the handwriting was like super, uh, let's call it what it, it was like feminine and girly, yeah, like, yeah. and definitely looked like no man on earth wrote that, you know, cause uh, I don't know what it is. I, I, I'm gonna call it what you want. Maybe it's just how we learn styles. I'm sure it's probably a style that could be unlearned, but it's just how girls write and guys write is different. Mm -hmm. And you know, that doesn't mean you can't always tell, but like there's certain, certain examples of, you know, this was from a guy or from a girl. You feel me? I got homeboys that still write like every letter, like they're tagging and shit. It's all capitals with the little swoops and I'm like, bruh, 
<laughs> you ain't you ain't you ain't tagged or fucking graffiti no wall in like damn near 20 years bro why are you still write like i hope you don't write like this on your application when you fucking <laughs> when you try to get a job i know it's hard for you to get a job if you write like this but i know casting you know what i mean so you could tell who what comes from where so they cooked her what do you think do you think that shit was real or do you or do you think that was definitely a female but but see this is what i, I was gonna say uh before that go ahead go ahead though no, no, you say it before. I was just going to say, what? Well, how do we know that her boo wasn't a girl? Ooh, look at you. I just thought about that right now because I was going to say something. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, Michelle, I was like, wait a minute. How do we not know that she wasn't a female that wrote it at? And everybody just jumped on her neck. Assuming it was like a... Ain't hey, no dude do that. But I mean, then again, I don't know the post or maybe how she said it. And maybe she said it was a dude, but like... Maybe she didn't say it at all. I'm not quite sure. I got damn they got to revisit that post and look like what if what if it was she never said what what the gender was and the whole time it wasn't her her Some girlfriend her assuming. Yeah. <laughs> don't you assume her that handwriting? You don't know who the fuck it came from. I'm sure everybody in the house right now thinks I'm a fucking weirdo right now yelling into the mic like this. But hey, I'm just trying to get this. Everybody knows you're a weirdo. <laughs> I don't <Think> know. So? <laughs> Bro, they live with you. They live with you. They know you're a oh fucking God. weirdo. It's true, huh? <laughs> there ain't no uh, hiding. I don't know why you like think you can hide. Like you can't what am, hide. What if I'm like that episode of, of uh, Family Guy where Peter, the mom, and, and, and what's her name? Uh, what's the mom's Lois? name? Lois. They thought they were the shit when they smoked weed and played their guitars, <laughs> and they went and finally did a what's it called a a, 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 a talent show, and got high and started playing the guitars, and they're like, yeah, we fucking killed it, and then it actually shows what happened. They're like, oh, la, 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 <laughs> off tune, and they sounded like shit. What if the whole time, bro, I'm just like, yeah, I'm fucking great, dad, and everyone's like, yo, this motherfucker is burnt. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time, I'm like, yeah, man, I smoke weed. I'm fucking good. I'm the best. That's like, fine. what the fuck you can tell me? <laughs> the whole time, everybody in the house is like, yo, just look out for him. You know, make sure he doesn't, he doesn't, he chews all his food, and you know, he doesn't bump his head and knock him and go to sleep because they worry yeah. about me. Really, I'm a ward. <laughs> I'm, I'm incapable of shit. <laughs> this whole time. This whole time. <laughs> and I thought I was handling business. Look at you. <laughs> you know, that's a high possibility, which you just hold describe there. That's a big possibility. <laughs> yeah. It could be, but it's all right, though. You know, I mean, uh, they got your back. That's all that matters, right? Like, it's like. At least I know I'm loved for who I am and not who people okay. think I am. Okay. <laughs> that's like when you got a friend and their parent is just like a fucking uh, a grouchy ass motherfucker and never says that. You, you go over to their house, you ever been to a friend's house and they have a grouchy ass parent? And you walk in there and it's mad awkward from the gate and they're just like, what are y'all doing? What the fuck y'all want in here or something? And you're just like, I just came to hang out with your son and, you know, we're going to play video games and get the fuck out of my living room. And you're just like, <laughs> all right, I'm out of here. Like, like it's just, you know what I mean? You never <laughs> no, had a friend like that? I know. No, I never had a friend like that before. Probably different for girls. For guys, it's like, what the fuck are you doing in my house type shit. Yeah. You're, you're terrible. <laughs> I've always been a pleasure to have around, okay? So yeah. <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Those fucking dirty old men I yeah. from the get, I'm telling you. Terrible. Being a, being a woman is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, shit, so, man. Y'all go through. You know, I guess said it from the, from the gates, bro. It's disgusting, like how young it starts. Well, that's why I was saying, like, for instance, like, uh, like for guys, it's different. For guys, like I said, it's just like we're a threat. Mm. So that's how we're treated. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? I see while, that. While for sure. Females are like sexualized and stuff like that. Yeah. Guys are treated like a threat. Like, as, like well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak for as far as like uh, brown folks. At least you know we're looked. No matter what, that's why when I, I would never trip when I went to my friend's house and their dad was like, "Who the fuck are you?" And I'm just like, I came to, you know, what's the name's friend? You know, such as his friend. They're like, you know, I'm not gonna back down, but I'm just not. I'm like, I get it, you know. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't know who the fuck I am, you, you know. I don't know. And on top of that, it's like people fuck it up for other people. They do. You know what I mean? Motherfucker be stealing. You bring him over to the house, he steals some shit. Now it's like all your friends are looked at like these. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, shh, this motherfucker. And, and hey, then, it'd always be like, do they have a brother? No, you can't go over there. I swear I never got you know, to hang out at none of my friends' house. It was always like, they can come over here or something, you know. It was Third and Skrilla. <laughs> they, 
<laughs> then you come to the third block. Hey, that, that was off. That was off the hook. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was. It was three levels of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of wild shit going on. Uh, but, you know, um, yeah, at the, uh, at the end of the day, man, we, we kind of just killed that whole topic because we don't know if it was a fucking girl or not. If it, if it wasn't a girl and it, was a du- it wasn't a dude and she's like the fucking Marsha Brady and shit where this is my boyfriend, George Glass. And it's like, ain't nobody, it's an imaginary made up person. Then she's wilding out because <laughs> this, is what the, uh, this is my thing. Like, whether since since valentine's day is a made-up thing you should never feel like if somebody does or doesn't do for you is is all that matters Mm -hmm. if you live by their praise you'll die by their fucking by you know their lack of it you know what i mean you'll die by the fucking targets on your back so it's like if she did that she could have been like yo you know it's easy i'm taking myself to dubai what 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 better flex that's a bit to me that's a better flex than anybody saying they gave you something and you posting it Okay, that's exactly what I was thinking, dude. That was my takeaway from it. It was just like another one of those say it with your chest moments. You know what I mean? Like, I got this for me. I did this for me. Like, self-love again. I love myself. I self-love myself. (laughs) Self-love is Yeah, that's right. Sometimes sometimes some self-love is a little bit more expensive than other (laughs) self-love. Some shit, you could just get it for the free. You know, you ain't got to do nothing. but uh, (laughs) Get some quiet time. You feel me? But uh, at the end of the day... Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. If she, you know, yeah. if she, you know, she didn't have to do all that if it was nobody there. And if, but I've seen people that have faked that though too. That's like a real thing. People fake having yeah. boyfriends and and fake. This, it's just it's it's Instagram shit, yo. At the end of the day, this is all Instagram bullshit. This shit wouldn't be nothing really, it, or we wouldn't know about it if there wasn't no Instagram. You know? Yeah, that's true. You know, unless you're like that creep dude that takes a fucking rubber doll on a date and fucking on Valentine's Day, like this is my girl right here, and just creeps everybody in the fucking <laughs> restaurant out. You ever seen that shit before? <laughs> The rubber doll was a little much. No, but I kind of want to go out with him and his uh, doll. <laughs> yeah, I want to make He's it. Like, hey, check it out. <laughs> this is my Wait. fuck doll. <laughs> oh, the, uh, oh, I that's mean, my... if anybody has a fuck doll, let me know and we can fucking make it a, a triple date. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> you're like, you're, unlocked. <laughs> you're like, you're like, you're like, yo, are you okay? She okay? She don't talk much, does she? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they look better when they don't talk. No, I'm just kidding. That's weird. <laughs> when, they don't talk, when they don't talk because they're doing something else with their fucking mouth. But, anyways, um, so, that's yeah, a let's leave it here. No, yeah. no. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Buffy. <laughs> anyways, okay, so she was wilding for that one. Uh, we've seen a little post today. I brought it up in the group chat. I just want to know how you feel about it. You know, they said that the uh, group of researchers have now developed a technology where they could see through walls. With only Wi-Fi signal. Um, they didn't have a lot of details on it, but I know that it brings out a deep, dark fear of yours. So I figured we'd address it on the podcast, you know, like any normal person would. Um so <laughs> unload all that personal baggage off. <laughs> exactly. Let us let us, you know, defile ourselves in front of let us truly be exposed in front of for the whole world to hear our bullshit. You know what I mean? But no, um, so how do you feel about that? Do we okay? Well, I want you uh, after you tell me how you feel about it. I want you to tell me at least two good things that you think could come of it from having it. We already know what the negative shit is. Why you know? I mean, we could, we're going to list that off too. But go ahead. So you don't you ain't fucking with this or what? No, this is like like you mentioned a deep dark fear, right? Like my in the in the back of my mind where I think of weird things. Okay. I've thought to myself, like, what if somebody can fucking look through my walls and see me? Like, <laughs> shut up. Come on. <laughs> I'm being vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm listening. I just, I have the most ridiculous mind. Like, so when you say certain shit, I, 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 I don't, I'm not making fun of the situation, but I'd be trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm curious. (laughs) That's the thing. I can't always say what I think. It's just it's more for my myself to to enjoy than it is to bring out to everybody else. Thing, okay, is that I'm a real bag, okay? No, go ahead. Who knows what's going on in these walls? And he died in outer space. (laughs) 
<laughs> right? Like, I don't know. So it's always been like really weird to me. I think of really weird scenarios. And that's one of them where people can see through my walls and see like, I don't know, see me without me seeing them or something. And so this brings to life a whole ass new fear. Like how much could they see? What could they see? What kind of Wi-Fi? Like there's questions. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I just think that it's terrible. Like uh, it's going to really, whoever job that is, if they ever decide to use it for whatever, to spy, to look for criminals or whatever it is, be whatever. Imagine that person's job in the bullshit they got to see that they know they don't want to see. There's probably some shit that they might want to see. Like, you know what I mean? But think of the bullshit you see that you don't fucking want to see. There's just some shit that you don't need to see, period. Like, I don't think I don't think that there's anything really good. I mean, I'm sure it could it could help people in a certain way, but I think that the the negative um, aspect of having that is far outweighs the um, what it could do. Because I, I'm like you, like first of all, I have no shame because I've been to prison and all my dignity has been stripped from me. So I I I, I learned to to not have shame about nothing. But then I came home and I restored my dignity by by understanding that I'm like I don't have to live like a fucking animal out on the streets. You know what I mean? But um, you know, but um, so being that it's like I get it. But I've lived in similar situations. They couldn't see through the walls, but they could see everyone at all times. So it's like, you feel me? Couldn't even jerk off in peace. It was like, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like at the end of the day, it, I wouldn't want it to be out like this out here. You know, I, I think it's some bullshit that uh, they're gonna try to uh, justify it with with like, oh, this could save lives. We're good. We we could catch criminals and this. And it's like, nah, nah, bro. Because all the other shit that y'all could do um, with it that. Um, I'm pretty sure it would is illegal and probably a violation of people's human rights. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not I'm not rocking with that shit. I thought that was wild though. I brought it to the table just because, and I'm learning that uh, that's one of like like people's real dark, deep dark secrets. More and more, I feel like we're creating technology that are um, like it got like uh, what do you call that? Not enabling, but we're creating technology that is like setting off those fears and more people you know, you know what i'm saying like yeah. does that make sense it does even with alexa listening and stuff like yeah uh, that's just wild like i have to tell people when they're in my house like listen alexa's listening like you yeah. can't your phone's you listening can, to you you can say you know what i mean exactly but but alexa is even more so bro like she i know my phone's listening but she's like there's super other, sensitive yeah there's people i don't know that they would really hear too much Besides me yelling at my kids or something, but like <laughs> Alexa, no. Alexa's all, Alexa notifying the 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 county about <laughs> notifying <laughs> child services. I got these book recommendations: <laughs> How to Be a Better Parent. <laughs> yeah, like like like, do you are you are your kids safe? Call one eight hundred. Did it playing commercials and shit like that it's on stress management? <laughs> she really does give me book recommendations. Sometimes she'll light up and be like. I got these book recommendations for you. Would you like to hear it? And I'm like, sure. What do you got for me today? But yeah, anywho, it's a, it's a, it's a fear. Do you have anything like that? That's weird that you. Uh, think a deep dark time? fear, uh, yeah. like what? Uh, maybe. Um, I think everybody has deep dark fear. I don't have a fear of like, like I said, I have no shame. So, you know, Alexa, <laughs> what's that noise? <laughs> If you're going to listen to Alexa, you know, you play the right music for me or something. If you don't want to hear us, play some tunes so you can hear that. You know what I mean? But, um, <laughs> but no, I mean, like, otherwise, like, is there any, like, irrational things that you think of? Like, oh, irrational? One? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't say, uh, I can't say, I'm, I'm really a different person because not a lot. I have not, don't have a lot of fear of things anymore. Maybe it's because I've seen a lot. Mm. I think my my great just my my uh, as far as irrational fears I don't have I have fears of like other things you know I like I'm realistic very things. yeah realistic things but like irrational fears like if this technology came out I'm like fuck it I'm like they're gonna see me when I jerk off they're gonna see me when I take a shit they're gonna see me when you know I me mean? when when I got a boner or whatever the fuck I don't know no. they're gonna see that's their they if you want like they're I told you remember, yeah 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 remember what I told you when we brought this thing out it's like they're gonna be bored looking at me because it, it's it, it, Ain't nothing going on over here anyways. I ain't doing nothing stupid, but um, I, I don't like it. I don't fuck with it just because of the fact 
of that. And as far as deep, dark, like uh, irrational fears, I got to really think about that. You know, I'm afraid of. I think I'm like a borderline hypochondriac, though. And a hypochondriac is somebody who thinks that they're sick often or. Uh, yeah. A hypochondriac is someone that, that, that always thinks that they're sick and it's always something. And um, they um, sometimes it's even, I think, a psychosomatic where they feel symptoms, but it's really just because they're. You know, they're tripping. You know, it's like when you eat an edible and you start flipping out. You're like, my heart's beating fast. That's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> it's really not, though. It's beating regular and you're just thinking it's beating fast because you're listening to it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm kind of like, because I'll be like, that's the thing. That's what they tell. I'm the, I'm the type of person that they made this rule for. They're like, don't Google your symptoms when you don't feel good. Because you'll fuck around and I have stomach cancer or some crazy shit. You'll be like, oh my God, I'm going to die. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, they tell you that. They they, they recommend you contact your physician before you start con- uh, Googling symptoms and shit. You know, because then you're like, oh shit. You know, the, the internet is ruthless, like I said. But uh, but um, no, but I'll be like, oh, I'm dying. Or maybe I'm feeling this weird. I'm feeling weird. Why do I feel weird? Do I got the Rona? Like, I got to go check. Like, no, no. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just, the hell of extra tests inside your closet, like, ready to Yeah, the man, but no, if we're talking about irrational fears, then I'd, then I'd be like, what if it's these tests that are giving us the Rona? <laughs> and then I just start, and then I start, then I start going down a wormhole. Like, I, I conspiracy theory myself. Like, I couldn't follow nobody in their conspiracy theories because I'm too busy making my own and starting my own and shit <laughs> for myself in my head. You feel me? Does that make sense? I'm like, what if they're fucking spreading the new Rona through these and while I'm testing myself, I'm really infecting myself. Mm. And then and then it takes days to gestate for me to actually come up positive. So then I'm running around thinking I ain't got the Rona and I'm really spreading the Rona. See, this is the kind of weird shit. So, yeah, maybe that's an irrational fear. I'll be, and you know what? A lot of time it's like I'm not scared of it. It's just me just thinking. Like I think yeah. a lot. So it's just like it's not that I'm fucking... I'm scared and I don't believe that shit, but it's just, it's just irrational. Like sometimes the way I be thinking of, of shit, like, I, I don't know, I guess it's just our hood mentality or whatever. So it's like, what's the catch? What these free? Yes. What's, what's the wrong catch? with them? What's wrong with them? You know what I mean? Like where you get them from? Like, you know what I'm saying? You're just like, it's like whatever. So maybe that's what it is. It's a little bit of that, but it's survival though. Instinct that, that hood mentality is like, because you, you're in harsh circumstances. So you use that as your survival technique. And it, and I tell people, I was like, I'm still, I'm not who I was before, but my survival instincts will always be there. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? My survival instincts will always be there. though, you know? Yeah. They're Some people don't got them though. No, make, sure you, make, make sure you teach your kids that yes. so self-reliant. I was just talk, having a talk with my, my family about that. It's important to be self-reliant because you don't want to someone to not be able to, your family member to not be able to do something and be at the mercy of someone else because they could do that for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know you know how controlling people are. They'll be like, oh, I could do this, I could do that. And they'll be trying to like embed themselves in your shit. You do what I mean? Like to the point where you can't move it to, without them. So yeah. anyways, that's a whole nother Valentine's Day um, topic. We could talk about some other time. Toxic people. But, <laughs> but um, anyways, fuck that technology. Also, another thing, we're going to talk about double standards because um, I'm going to use an example, but there's a lot of double standards in, uh, on the planet Earth and in this country that we live in. I look stoned right now, by the way. Anyways, um, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> you look you like this right here. It looks like it's going into this with your. <laughs> like, it looks like it's I got a handlebar mustache right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is, orale. I look like I fucking. I look like, I look like La Bamba right now. So look. <laughs> so look. Um, you know, uh, I seen a video a couple of days ago came out. Uh, it was, I thought it was kind of funny, but at the same time, I understood, like, you know, I understood the, the, the message and why he reacted in the way he did. But uh, there's a video of a uh, female grabbing Buster Rhymes cheeks in the, in the airport. And she flat out did it. Just walked up and goosed him. You feel me one time. And he turned yeah. around and threw the, threw his drink at her. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, people, there was, it, you know how it goes, you know, stuff like this, you know, always sparks up uh, conversation and topics amongst us. And of course, and, and at the, at, at, at society at large, because there is a lot of double standards out there. And we just, some we accept and some we, we, uh, 
you know, we we give the attention that needs to be given, you know, for that shit to change. Like, for instance, how they pay women compared to men. They should pay men. I, 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 if you do a job, I don't give a fuck what it is. If you do a job, you should get paid for that job, which, which you get paid for. Mm-hmm. You know, so if the standard rate is this amount, then you should be getting paid. That doesn't matter what you are. Now, if you're not doing your fucking job, that's a different story. I can't speak on that. Yeah. But um, I just that's just off the rip. So we know that's a, a double standard of a sort that definitely needs to... Um, you know, that we could do without, but people were acting, really acting like, oh, that ain't no thing. It's nothing. I mean, it, it, it really wasn't, you know, it, 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 but at the same time, your personal space is not a thing. Mm-hmm. Like I get it. No one died. That's what they're trying to, I, I hope that's what they were getting at. Like no one died. Oh, he's he going to be fine. Yeah. He got money. Of course. That's not the point. The personal space is the point. Mm-hmm. You know, at what point do we do we um, allow somebody to do something like that? And, you know, on one hand, it's cool. And at one hand, oh, fuck, because, right? you know, if it was Buster Rhyme grabbing somebody's cheeks, it'd be everywhere right now. You know, <laughs> they'd be on his line. They'd be on his bumper. You feel me? Yeah. So my thing is, is that, you know, where 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 do we draw the line? Where is the line at? Like, um, you're not going to goose me like that because. uh First of all, ladies, if you reach out and you touch me without asking me, you gotta, you better be touching me with a hundred dollars, so because <laughs> uh, it's not free. You know? But uh, if you're gonna goose me, hell no, nah, you better pay me. First of all, guys don't like getting their ass grabbed like that to begin with. So she was out of pocket in a lot of ways. Maybe she would have grabbed. She probably would have had a better result trying to grab his meat. You know what I mean? You think so? I don't know. I, I don't think no. To be honest with you, so. but I mean. I would tell you like this, if a female came up and touched me, I would rather she grab my dick than grab my ass. No, it's taken. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Right, it's not it's not for out there for none. No, I'm it's not an invitation by any <laughs> no, means, no. ladies out there in fucking podcast land. Like before, because I'm, I'm, I might do the same thing to you. No, I'm just gonna, kidding. <laughs> if that's the case, I'm charging double at the door. So if you really want to be in there, yeah, you're gonna have to pay more. So um but hey, I, uh, don't worry about that. You know, I'll post my cash app in the, um, you know what in the I link. Think in my- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I think that consent, right, all over again, because um, maybe, because I can't think of any situation where, where somebody would just be okay with somebody grabbing at them unexpectedly. You know what I mean? Like somebody's just having a drink at the bar and they just get grabbed. Like I can't think of not one person that would be like, accepting of that you know yeah or okay with it or of some sort no I, I get that but i mean it depends you know some of your friends you you have friends that you see all the time maybe you guys fucking sock each other in the arm when you see each other or do something stupid touch each other's fucking hair i don't know what girls fucking do you know what i mean fucking you're right i have grabbed a lot of ass you're okay right. so but that, i think i think i think first of all what people need to understand is like know who the fuck you're playing with yeah. And if you don't know Buster Rhymes like that, you know him from a can of paint, you probably don't want to grab him like that. Like Or anybody. If you know and if you don't anybody, know, period, anybody. yeah, but I'm just you know, that's the main example. But yeah, in, in general, like you're right. Don't touch people. I'm a, like I say, even in <laughs> like they were talking about, we were also talking about how, you know, the whole thing with Chris Brown right now, and you know, and I you know, I don't really uh, listen to music like those that music and shit like that like I don't really do R&B of modern time R&B no more I just my personal thing but um, you know the same thing he kind of was like the, you know somebody was giving him shit online about his old domestic violence case and then you know he would just point it out which he probably shouldn't have did it that way but he pointed out he's like y'all motherfuckers still talking shit about something that happened 17 years ago and that, that that's already been squashed and then you guys go run to watch uh, Chris Sean Rock and, and Blueface beat each other up in the streets and have a toxic relationship. And where, you know, they're staying together, but they still hurting each other. And, and you guys are tripping on me. First of all, you shouldn't have brought it up. But I mean, that's a double standard, though, because it's like, you know, um, people will weaponize mistakes that you made against to, to against you, you know, and for whatever motives or reasons they have, you know. So that's why I always tell people too, like, because of shit like that and how people are and how how the internet works, you know, you don't want to run to the internet with all your fucking problems. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is you're you're giving people, uh, you know, maybe you don't have, maybe you're cool with everybody, but one day maybe you fall out with somebody. 
and they know all your shit. Mm-hmm. And now they, you know, they could find ways to uh, use that because people are spiteful. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I think it is a terrible double standard, but it's real. And um, some of them are, some of them are kind of wild though. Like, like we were talking about the fighting. Like mm-hmm. if you fight girls and guys fighting, mm-hmm. it's like you're like, like, you know, it's unforgivable to hit a woman, you know, yeah. without her consent. Um, and um, it's unforgivable, but it's it's okay. F- uh, it's okay for her to hit a man. No, like, and people really, uh, people really believe that shit though. Really, really believe it. it's okay. You can, if you know, she was slapping him up, and we're not gonna sit there and jump in. But the minute he defends himself, everybody in the crowd rushes him and beats him up. It's like, nah, man. It's like it don't work that way. Or like another one too that really works my nerves is that like I I see videos where like the women will expose themselves right like their boobs or like their ass or something and then to like a complete stranger in public and it'd be like oh yeah girl what's good or something but then if a guy were to do that oh it's all bad you know you're a fucking perv you're a sexual predator yeah. And that's out to me. Like, <laughs> let's let's see all the genitals. If it would be, it would be hot mama fighting for the rights of wieners. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, uh, ask me. Uh, just, I just, just know I'm not audience. surprised. <laughs> 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 this comes to no surprise to me, but I'm to just everybody saying, else, I'm, I want to fight for all the genitals to be exposed. You know? <laughs> First it's of all, only look. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't want to see it though if I'm walking down the goddamn street. Period. You know, and titties too. Like everybody right. got to, everybody got a preference. You know what I mean? But I'm saying like, like you know, um, that's a whole other can of worms right there. Like you're you. out with your son at dinner. And well, that's then, what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's how live out. That's how live inappropriate. Like I'll flash on a man or a woman who's exposing themselves in a public setting where there's children or that's, something. That's basically what I was trying to say is for, yeah. the, is for, for my kids. I don't want to be walking around with my kids and you know what no, I mean? But at the same kids. time, <laughs> if if it's the right place and the right time with the right person, then maybe my wiener does come out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. <laughs> and I get it. It has to be the right circumstances. So, uh, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, no, it's it's, t- it's a lot of double standards, though, and it's a, a lot, lot of bullshit. Of like, I- I'm a firm believer, please, nobody hits nobody. Keep your fucking hands to yourself. Um, of course, man, you know, whether people want to admit it or not, physically, we're built different. Physically, we're stronger than women. So um, you hit a woman, you're going to hurt a woman. But at the same time, a woman will hurt you in other ways. <laughs> sure, she oh, she gonna hurt you, bro. <laughs> she gonna hurt you. <laughs> Women are now. Nah, I, I seen a dope ass breakdown of kind of like the roles of you know, like as far as just what how we were built. You know, not so much of a person, but how we were built. It was pretty impressive. I, I don't got it, or else I play the clip. But um, anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, nobody hits nobody. Everybody love everybody, and I don't care who you are. If you hit me, I'm gonna defend myself. There's just since I'm a man. There's going to be degrees to which I defend myself. You dig what I'm saying? If you're another man, I'm going to protect myself at all times. If you're a woman, you know, I'm going to try to get away from you. You know what I mean? And try to, you know, block and 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 maybe even deflect something. But at the same time, if you're pushing and you keep swinging, you might catch an elbow. And that's just anybody in general. You dig what I'm saying? What kind of elbow? It might be a, uh, it might be do- a, a light elbow, or it might be you know the, the heavy elbow. So the people's elbow. The people's elbow. The po- the most important thing is don't fucking hit nobody if you're not ready to don't get hit back. Grabbing on nobody, neither, right? Don't grab nobody's yeeks all in the motherfucking airport and shit. Uh, and they don't come up to me like I said. If you come up to me and touch me, man, it better be you better be touching me with some money. So if you're a grubby little, there's, there's only two ways I'm going to react. You know what I mean? If you're a dude, you're going to get punched. And if you're a girl, depends on what you look like. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm talking shit. But uh, <laughs> like I said, it's a, it's a double standard, but it don't apply to everybody. You dig what I'm saying, man? That double yeah. standard, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's a double, it's a triple double standard. You know what I mean? We're stacking them now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so look, I think we did it. I think, you know, we just released this podcast is over. I'm spent. <laughs> ah, I'm spent. So uh, go good. ahead and uh, mm-hmm. now that you now that you're on the podcast, 
once you say where people to reach you, you better make sure that you always shout out your podcast and where people can find it so they know. That's part of your outro now, you dig? Oh, okay. So to, to remember, you are the brand. So wherever you go, you must spread that brand shamelessly and at, at all times. So when they tell you, hey, how can we find you? Make sure you can find me in your motherfucking mama's podcast in, in, in her motherfucking ear talking all this slick shit because she liked that shit. <laughs> no. Um, not, not, I'm just saying that's an example. Like, you know, it might maybe somebody's mama do like somebody's there, mama okay. do. All right. I'm but you saying. can find me in your daddy's DMs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you, would you like to buy some tie dye? <laughs> and listen to my podcast. <laughs> That's how my DMs sound. Let me, oh slide in, let me slide in your DM and tell you, hey, listen to my music and fucking buy my clothes, you motherfuckers. <gasps> hey, it's crazy, huh? How. <laughs> No, it's crazy. <laughs> how the internet works. That's like, it's it's like we, we skipped the knocking on people's door how we used to do. Now it's just like, we're knocking on your DMs. Like, yo, check out my music. Seriously. <laughs> hey, I don't even mind though. I'm just like, I, I definitely took note and, and sent my podcast out to a couple of people that way, like through the DM. Like, hey, you know, check it out. <laughs> yeah, you got to. No shame. No shame. You can't, you can't have no shame. You know why? Because you, 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 you. It, it, and shame only makes you feel bad about yourself. And we're not about feeling bad about ourselves. We're no. about feeling good. You feel me? Yeah. So That's go ahead now. Let them know. How can they find you and where can they find the podcast? So go and follow me on Instagram at totally period tie dyed period designs. And then you can listen to me talk that shit on my own podcast at The Love Fix. That's triple X on any streaming platform there you go there you go and that's love spelled l-o-v-e because you know a lot of times people spell love the other way you know that with their mouth (laughs) no well yeah yeah because how i how i spell love is you know i need a bj that's how i spell it (laughs) it's spelled bj that's how you spell love yeah basically (laughs) give me a bj it's it's a phrase actually but hey if you, if you want to know the way to my heart, it's through my penis. So <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying, ladies. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> but, anyways, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble, huh? So, hey. <laughs> little do y'all know. But um, so with that being said, make sure that you guys check her out. Y'all already know how to find us. We, we you know, we're fucking around. There's no Patty here to stop our bullshit. So we're just going to keep running with it. Like, and we don't, st- hey, and we don't get our own selves off. We got to, I have never been in the same room with Patty, with, with, with Patty, <laughs> with Patty to do a podcast yet. Yeah. Okay. Like y'all are in both billionaires and shit. All right. Don't forget you joined the billionaire club too. You know what I mean? You and fucking Tim, both of y'all look like some 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 low key like no nah, uh, some minimalist billionaires like where you're like yeah we just living you know we live a regular everyday life you know we got two kids I go to work she's a house mother but you know at any time you know what I'm saying a hundred million out the bank right now what's happening and then Patty of course she's just like that she's like one of these people when we say these people using it for good or bad it's like. Fortunate for us, Patty's one of the good people. You dig what I'm saying? So no, shout Patty. out to Patty fighting for our rights out there, <laughs> holding the holding the line down between uh, anarchy and chaos. You know, so <laughs> shout out to Patty. Yeah, we'll we'll get you, Patty. It's cool. Once again, I was telling you that there's no Patty here, so it just cut us off on our bullshit, and here we are still going on some bullshit <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, we need that producer. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we, need some, we need some balances because we definitely on this side. We definitely on the same side on a lot of shit over here. We you got two scumbags. We need somebody that's more squeaky clean on the on to to mediate this shit. This shit's it going downhill. Happening. It ain't happening. This We're shit's going it. downhill real fast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, it's known by podcast. You know where to find us at. I just told you where, but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be a little bit more broader for everyone else because not everybody's mama listened to the podcast like that. So, um, you know, you can find us on all podcasting platforms. Just look up No by Podcast. You can find all the episodes there. Subscribe. Leave a, a a rating, a review, slanderous in the comments, whatever makes you feel better, whatever you got to tell your friends to make yourself look cool. Uh, we're OK with it. We could be your fucking cop out. Don't trip as long as you're helping running up the numbers and, and keeping your hate at at least six feet distance at all times. We're going to be just great. 
Also, you could make sure if you really fuck with us and you really want to support us, then you go to our YouTube channel because that's where we really like to see our interaction the most. Go to Rebirth Media Films. That's R-I-B-I-R-T-H Media Films with a Z. You could listen to the podcast. Like We got vlogs and different content up there. You know, hit the playlist section. It's all nice and neat for you. Uh, short attention span fucks that can't seem to... Uh, if it's not the first thing I click on, uh, I'd start... Uh, the veins start popping out of my neck. It's all really there. It's nice and neat for you. You know, you don't have to do a lot of work to get to it. It's like, it's like peeling off the wrapper to some gum or something. You know, it's just... Ah, and you're there, and you know, it's not too much struggling, you know, it's not eating crab legs and shit. So, uh, with that being said, thank you once again, Hot Mama, for being on the podcast. Thank you, everybody out there, for listening, and thank you, bitch, for doing what she does. And let's be a bitch. Anyways, all right. <laughs> sorry, Patty. I'm sorry. You know, I know if you're listening, you're mad. You're very, you're very disappointed in me right now. <laughs> I do this for you. <laughs> if, it, if you didn't say that you were disappointed, I would never do this shit. <laughs> My motivation comes from different places. All right. Cue the Eminem tape. <laughs> <laughs>